Recent innovations in pavement design and construction in Wisconsin are leading to roads that last longer, are less costly to maintain, and involve less traffic disruption when maintenance is required. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is leading the way in validating perpetual pavement concepts on Interstate 43 in conjunction with the Marquette Interchange Reconstruction Project. The Marquette Interchange Reconstruction Project is the largest project ever attempted in the state of Wisconsin and it encompasses many new and innovative technologies. One of these technologies is perpetual pavement. Perpetual asphalt pavement is composed of three layers, a bottom layer to provide fatigue resistance, and intermediate and upper layers to resist the top-down cracking and rutting caused by traffic loadings. Working together, these layers are built to provide a pavement life of up to 75 years, as compared to the 20-year design life of a traditional hotmix asphalt pavement. Every 15 to 20 years, as the surface layer is distressed by traffic and weather, it can be replaced overnight without the need to reconstruct the entire pavement, saving time, money, and motorist inconvenience. The Wisconsin Highway Research Program selected Marquette University professor James Crevetti to study the performance of a perpetual pavement section on a continuous real-time basis with data transmitted wirelessly to investigators' computers. Perpetual pavements are designed for a long life, but you, you really need to look at local conditions, construction, traffic, and environment, and ensure that the perpetual pavement that's being built is actually performing to our expectations. And to do that, we need to do some instrumentations, look at live responses of pavements, and then use that information to better predict future life. The design of this research project uh, by Marquette University and Dr. Cravetti is the most complete and thorough instrumentation and collection of all the pertinent design data uh, that's uh, ever occurred. We have one sensor group which gives us information about the traffic loads. This incorporates a, a grouping of piezoelectric strips mounted into the surface of the pavement and that will tell us loading, speed, and position. We have another group of sensors which gives us the load response of the pavement. This includes strain gauges mounted at the bottom of the asphalt layer, pressure plates mounted within the base course and the subgrade layer. Together these will give us the actual key response of the pavement in terms of stress and strain response under loading. And we have an environmental group of sensors which gives us information on subgrade moisture temperature, pavement temperatures, air temperatures, wind speed, solar radiation, all these things that come into play to affect material properties and which may affect the performance of the pavement over time. We've also collected a lot of samples of the pavement, the subgrade, the base course, and these provide the materials characteristics that are important as an input to mechanistic empirical design. The process we used for installing our sensors was difficult because we were working with live construction. This was a mega project that the mantra was on time, on budget. So anything we did had to be transparent to the contractor. As an example, our strain gauges went in in a matter of 20 minutes and usually the design process has a four day period for installation. And I think the coordination with the contractors and with the WSDOT staff that were out there was a, a contributing factor to be able to do this seamlessly and not create a uh, hindrance to the completion of the project. The most critical time for these gauges is during construction. You just don't have the opportunity to, to take them out and put them in again. So we were, we were quite fortunate that the, the measures we took to protect these gauges and the processes we used to install them worked. I'd have to say this is a phenomenally successful project because the survivability of strain gauges has always been an issue on any of these installations and we've got 24 out of 25 strain gauges to survive construction. We have a little unique system we've set up here for this project where we take the data from the pavement, it goes wired into a roadside cabinet and then we have a wireless transmitter which moves that data from the roadside directly to the Marquette University buildings. Then it brings into our Marquette link which then makes it accessible throughout the world uh, via the World Wide Web. This is our diagnostic software which provides us a real-time view of what's happening in the field. But this shows the strain response from a five axle truck that just rolled through. And we can see the different responses or rear axles here, tandem axles here. And looking at this total response in the pavement and turning that into how much damage did that vehicle just cause to the pavement. The, the first part of this project was the actual procurement and installation of our sensors. We will now go into a second phase of this project, which will be collecting data, storing the data, analyzing the data for the next year to year and a half worth of trafficking. And we want to make this uh, uh, data available to anybody at any time 
and that uh, hopefully will be done by uh, the summer of 2008. And the more people look at it, the more ideas we might develop on how we really can use this data to design better pavements, design longer life pavements, and ultimately save our taxpayers' dollars.